Hey everyone, Jason Shafford here of M0A.com alongside... Hey y'all, I'm Gary Reeves with PilotSafety.org. They can tell you're from Texas when you say hey y'all. You know, it's just like a giveaway. I thought it was the pink shirt that gave it, it, it away. It was the pink shirt uh, that gave it away. Because you know, we all wear pink in Texas. I, I believe it. Yeah, there you go. Facebook, YouTube, we are so blessed. We are so thankful to be with you all tonight. We're talking about four flight and we're sharing more from four flight as well. So you can see this, Gary, uh, kind of go through what are we expecting to learn a little bit more about tonight? Well, the cool thing about ForeFlight is it's got the most features of any iPad program. Absolutely. The hard thing about ForeFlight is it's got the most features of any iPad program. Absolutely. And, you know, I train people all over the country consistently, and most really smart pilots only know about 20 to 30% of it. Yes. So tonight, with your expertise in VFR, sure. and me a little blind luck on the IFR thing, <laughs> yes. I think we can just get it a little farther nudged down the road and hopefully show you all some tricks that will help you be safer pilots. Absolutely. Let's give some shout outs. Who are we talking to? Where are you at? Where are you from? You're flying. We'll tell a little bit about ourselves. I'll say hi to some YouTube people. Give some shout outs. And I'll let Gary do some Facebook. Hey, Brandon, Orlando, Brian, Jose, Chuck, Paul, Will from Memphis. Great, Great to see you. Uh, username Anchors and Pilots in Maryland. I was born in Maryland, believe it or not. Uh, Andrew, Tim, Keith, uh, Leslie, Ron, Robert. Great to see you. Now they're just moving too fast to even kind of see Kyle. Great to see you. AJ, let's head over to Facebook now. Gary, give some shout outs over on the old Facebook to well, everybody. I, I'm really only going to say hi to people in Texas. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Tina from Houston. Hey. Hey, there we go. Exactly. Ah, hey, we got... That's my buddy, my buddy John Rich. Not to be confused with country singer John Rich, oh. but very close resemblance. Okay, that would be, you know, more impressive. Yeah. Hey, look, there's one of my friends, yeah. Ashley yeah. from Texas. Yeah. Hey, yes. buddy, how are you? We got <laughs> Tina from Houston. We got Kirby from Tacoa, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Got a couple people from Orlando. Just missed somebody else from San Antonio, Texas. Hey, Matt, look, yeah. Randy from Palmyra, Pennsylvania. I've got a lot of friends in Pennsylvania. And... Where I was born, John, is from Colorado, and I was actually born in Colorado. Didn't know that either. Absolutely would. We got a lot of people there tonight, and uh, we're just so excited to see you all. This is going to be the biggest live thing we've ever done. Absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. Let me tell you a little bit about Gary, because you might not realize what an expert that we have here that is Gary. Now over 7,500 hours, master CFI, double I, MEI. And just to put that in perspective of what a master CFI means, there's 112,000 flight instructors in the United States. There's about 800 master CFIs. There's about 11 of them from the pink state of Texas here, uh, like Gary, uh, which is just fantastic. Very, very uh, just uh, wonderful, wonderful guy. It's who we go to, and we redid Mike Zulu. Uh, Gary is who we went to when we needed training on our panel as well. Western Pacific Flight Instructor of the Year, just uh, absolutely outstanding instructor that you have uh, teaching you the IFR side and I'll lead the VFR side of things today. Well, and y'all got to admit, I sound really good on paper. Yeah. <laughs> At least on paper, I look reasonably smart. And, you know, I'm sure everybody here knows all about Jason, but just in case you're new to the world of Jason, he's 10,000 hours Almost. now, or just a couple hours short. He's an ATP, a CFI, a double I, an MEI. How long have you been teaching? So, uh, literally 18 years old, I became a flight instructor. Oh, I won't wow. say how old I am now, but there's two gray hairs look really close right, right there. So you've been teaching for like so. five or six years now. Yeah. That's, just, that's just awesome. <laughs> exactly. You know, he's not only the creator of the best online ground school, and I, own a, I used to own a big flight school in Los Angeles. I lived in California many years. Recommended everybody do M0A because they got that 100% pass rate yes. thing that's just... It's hard. And you know, he's actually authored over 10 books. Yes. In fact, a new book's coming out soon. It's something <laughs> Kyle Aviation Mastery or something. Aviation Mastery is the name of the book. Gary's helping out with a lot of that. And Aviation Mastery is a seminar. I saw Steve and a few others. Who else is going to Aviation Mastery in Orlando coming up? We're so excited. I was literally looking this morning, Gary. Uh -huh. uh, we have 11 first class seats left and 44 uh, general admission seats left. So we're so, almost sold out. So aviationmastery.org if you want to grab those as well. It'll be super. But anyways, enough about us. Enough 
enough of, uh, of chatting all about that. Let's go ahead and let's get talking about some ForeFlight. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my iPad up here as soon as it starts and stops uh, thinking here and get that all working. And we're gonna start working on some VFR flying. So let's go ahead, let's cut over to Jason's iPad because I posted that poll earlier and what most of you wanted to hear about was actually VFR flying. No offense to the IFR guy, the single pilot IFR guy, but um, most of them want to hear about VFR flying. So we're going to do the scenario based. You know, I actually, everyone says that. I actually went VFR once last year. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, I was totally scared. I, I believe it. I believe it. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have your iPad, now's a fantastic time to take it out. I'm going to start doing a VFR cross country, and Gary's going to depart out of there uh, via IFR. So, let's say we're flying down to Aviation Mastery in Orlando, yeah. and we're leaving my neck of the woods, Gary. I am right here in Ocala, Florida. This is where Gary and I are at right now. And we're going to head on down to good old MCO. I was literally there yesterday to check out the hotel for Aviation Mastery. Now, how many people here, you can just type in me in the chat, how many people here have flown into a class Bravo Airport. Not, not flown through Bravo airspace, I mean landed at the Bravo. Type in me in the chat. Let me update the uh, the Facebook chats here. Um, let's come well, you know, on. And, and that gives me like a really good question. Sure. You know, I've been teaching forever and of course I flew professionally. Yes. Do you think a lot of private pilots, which you're a pilot, yeah. are afraid of Class Bravo? A hundred percent. Absolutely. You know, and see what's weird to me is Class Bravo is always so much easier. Your hand is held, it's turn left here, turn right here, do this, but it's so intimidating. They're worried about the faster pace, but look at all these me's we have uh, flowing yeah, the Class Bravo wow. on, on YouTube. Let's go over to Facebook real quick here right. um, and Sandy, see all that. Mark went into San Diego, a great Class Bravo. Absolutely. Robert's been into Houston and DFW. And you know what's weird is most Bravo airports are actually fairly GA friendly. We're gonna talk exactly about that. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna find the FBOs much easier okay. uh, to just sneak right in there. So let's do this real quick here. Let's go back to my iPad screen and let me just run you through how I would do a VFR flight into MCO right now. So I'm starting, we're going to get the weather in just a second for now. Let's just look at the route and I'm going to head up here to my search and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in KOCF where we are based space to KMCO. Now I want to show you something really cool. Pay attention to the keyboard here. Look at the R key. Okay, I'm going to, or let's, let's, I'm sorry, I'm heading west. So we're going to do, look at the T key. I'm gonna press and hold the T key and pull down. And I just made a five. And now I'm gonna go over to the P key. I'm gonna press and hold down. Zero, again, zero, zero. Did you know you could do that? 5,000 feet. So I have in there OCF to MCO at five, oh, I'm so used to flying, uh, flying, uh, <laughs> IFR. IFR, I put in there, 5,500, I apologize, pull on the P key again, zero, zero over there, and I've got, I need to put feet in there, and I'm going to go ahead and press go. Did you know you could do that? Isn't that fantastic? A little shortcut there, now I'm going to go back to the numeric keyboard, it's all right there for you all. And one of the first things I want to do is I want to sit and I want to look at my route. And let's just kind of get detailed through, because I am VFR, right? I'm not going to be VFR and rely solely on this, I'm using for flight to help with pilotage and dead reckoning. I still want to be looking outside and flying this airplane here. We want to avoid a lot of head down time. So we're flying on out, and so far my route's great. I've got to go right over top of Leesburg. It's only up to 1,600 feet. It'll be fantastic, or less than 1,600 feet. Right on up and over that. I'll be well over that. Into the Bravo airspace here. Some great checkpoints, some great lakes, and everything else. And I'm coming into MCO. Not a problem so far. So now I have a question. Sure. Because you're so much more familiar with the Florida Bravo than I yes. am. When you go in VFR, is yes. there a direction or a way they prefer you to come in? I, I can tell you from experience in this that so there's no chance that we're going to get this right here, unfortunately. You have to look, we're cutting right through Orlando Executive. There's a reason they have this Surface Class E extended. You see what I'm talking about right there? Mm -hmm. Protecting their the ILS approach. Line. Exactly, they're protecting mm -hmm. that approach. There is no way we're getting that. In fact, yes, there's the Disney TFR there, but oftentimes you'd be amazed at how close they take us to that. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use the four flight, just the rubber band method here. And let's find some good VFR checkpoints. I have interstate 
75. Can you see it right there, the big 75? Interstate 75 that comes all the way down. This is a huge intersection down here that I know I can see. I'm gonna rubber band myself by pushing and pressing on my route and pulling my route over, and I'm gonna use that as my fix here. So you do fly IFR. I fly roads. Right. I know where you're going there with cheesy pilot jokes. So absolutely though, I've got that and I can continue those roads on down. Now that takes me a little bit south of Leesburg, this class Delta here. I wasn't too terribly concerned with, but I have it there. And let's see, this takes me, well, it doesn't really help me a whole lot with my, with my uh, MCO issues, so, or my Orlando executive issues. So let's see, maybe I can rubber band now down to this intersection here and just keep kind of spreading that and seeing how that makes for adjustments here. And well, it's kind of getting better here as we're working our way kind of out of that path, knowing we're either gonna land three, six, or one, eight, north or south when it comes into here. So we have all of that set. Now, I've looked at this, but this route is only as good as the weather that I give it and the weather that I choose. So one thing, and this is something that Gary actually taught me and it applies in VFR, or IFR. And remember back in the day, we used to call the flight briefers. We'd call the flight briefers and what would we always say? I'd like to file a VFR and IFR flight plan and get a standard weather briefing. And Gary brought up a very good point. He said, Jason, we have that out of order. Why are we filing and then getting a briefing? I should brief to my filing. So I don't even know what the, I mean, we could turn on weather and everything else, but I need to find out if this is even going to work for me in the first place. So up in the top left-hand corner, I'm gonna hit my flight plan up here, and I'm gonna leave my longitude and latitudinal points in there as far as that goes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set this little send button in the right corner of that flight plan box. And I'm gonna send that to my flights. So we're gonna send that on over and that's gonna load up. And what I'm gonna do now is you see that green cloud right there? Can everybody see that green cloud kind of center right of the screen? I'm gonna press that, that's my briefing button. And it's gonna go ahead and retrieve my briefing and we're gonna go through a very quick standard weather briefing here together. Then I'm gonna show you something just truly amazing with VFR flight plans here in a second. And you know what's really great yes. about you hitting the briefing button? Yes. You've now satisfied the legal agreement with 91103. You know, it's so fascinating. I was actually literally just reading an NTSB report that said uh, he did obtain a weather briefing from ForeFlight, and ForeFlight was literally named in the NTSB report. It was, it was fascinating. When you hit the briefing button, it logs it, which now makes your weather briefing legal. Yes. Absolutely. Because you can prove you got it. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is taking a little bit long, but here we are now. We're back up and running on that. So uh, it opens up uh, with, uh, comes out swinging here, closed or unsafe notams here. Runway 17 left, 35 right, closed. And it gives me the dates as far as when those closures are. Uh, absolutely fantastic. No, when we're dealing with runway closures. Um, let's continue on here. My synopsis gives me a beautiful surface analysis chart. We're flying in Florida. We had this nasty cold front literally go through last night. How many Floridians on the webinar agree with that? It was a nasty little cold. You were, you were in Melbourne last night, so you and experienced it too. And the drive this morning was heavy rain and they were getting some pretty serious storms. You drove right through it, but we're smart enough to know that behind a cold front, it's a little bit windy, but with it comes some gorgeous weather for this flight here. Let's continue on here. And I know we know how to read METARs and TAFs. I just want to kind of show you everything that we can do and point out some very cool things here. Our cloud coverage. Let's say we wanted to do this at night. Gary, I'm kind of a wimp. I'm not a big fan. VFR night, a lot of cloud cover. I'm with you. I scared myself as a student pilot inadvertently flying into a cloud at night. And you had the blackness of night, the blackness of, you know, ocean on both sides of us in Florida. It, it kind of that, adds that, up. That's IFR. It's IFR. It really ends up very quickly being that way. It truly is here. All right, looking at our visibility and surface winds, as we can see, cutting ahead again, I apologize, I'm going fast. The goal is to show four flight, not to do an entire, uh, you know, NOAA weather brief demonstration here, but I wanna kind of show everything that I do through this process here. Um, I love this too, Gary. This interpolated everything for me. Interpolating was like a dirty word when I was learning to fly because math was never my strong suit. Right. And I'm trying to go back and forth between the winds aloft. It's done all the interpolation for me. 
right here, which is just outstanding here. My departure notams for the Ocala area, it shares about. My destination notams, we talked about that big runway closure as well. You'll see that in here. My in route navigational notams, my service notams. Um, uh, Williston uh, ASOS is out of service. If they ever get that thing fixed, it's been out of service forever here. In route airspace notams here. Um, and we're just kind of going through everything here. And then lastly, showing my, the other day they had a missile launch. I was hoping that would pull up. They're not showing, they're literally, we have a controlled firing area wow. where they show everything. Um, I don't know if that one, that one's probably off now, but uh, just showing, look, bald eagle protection measures in effect. They just give you every little notum here, no yeah. demand, so we have everything. Wow. International notums don't apply to us. Right. Uncategorized notums. You said something very interesting about uncategorized notums too, and I can't remember the, the point we're talking about, this is kind of the, the bleed over where just everything kind of just falls and this is an important spot for you though. Right, and that's where it didn't fit somewhere else. Yes. But it could be There's my missing missile. something. It's my missile launch. So if so we I look just told at the you. very top one, you see it says K, Z, J, K. Mm -hmm. Z is Zenter. Yeah. That's Jacksonville Center, center Notem. Yeah. If you saw a ZLA, that'd be a Los Angeles Center. Yes. But this is where stuff falls as kind of a catch-all and it gives you a second chance in case you miss something. But it's a missile launch. Like, I'd want to know about that. I would want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but they, rockets but they, me, but they bury it in uncategorized notes. It's uncategorized, it'll probably, it can't be that big of a deal. This is where most people actually fail the yeah. weather briefing is that they don't take the time to slowly read through it. it. You know, you saw that runway closure. Yes. You have no idea how many people on frequency will ask for a practice ILS approach. Yes at an airport where the ILS hadn't been working for a week. Yes. Did we not get the weather briefing? It's embarrassing, yeah, it really and, and they, they haven't. So let's keep moving forward here so Gary can share with you some of his techniques. So we're turned to beginning, and now we're back at the beginning. I'm gonna press back in the top left-handed corner there, and now I'm gonna do something a little bit crazy here. We're gonna do it all live. Let's confirm everything is good here first. OCF to MCO. I am leaving, we are leaving right now, let's say. It is time to go. Uh, let's take the Technum. Who wants to get some uh, multi-time with me? Uh, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that VFR, 5,500 feet. We've got everything all set. Let's go ahead and let's go proceed to file here. All right, we're gonna come on down. Number of aircraft, I told you I'm taking some of you with me here. Let's just take three just to be safe so we're within weight and balance. We're coming on down. I've got everything set. Again, this did everything for me through the nav log, the old nav log that we used to yeah. you know, fill out by hand and we st I still teach it. It's important, but we need to learn how to do both. Now watch this real quick with me. Bottom right hand corner, everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press file. Are you ready to depart in 13 minutes from now? Absolutely. Filing flight plan. Let this file. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's say now we start it up. Well, you know, I have, yeah, I go ahead. have a question. Yeah. So you filed the flight plan. Yes. That's great. But the hard thing is, is after you take off, especially at a tower field. Yes. Then you have to switch frequencies to a flight service station because yes. flight watch is gone. Or you're listening over the VOR. And quickly and open your flight plan. Yep. and then ask for flight following, I would rather go straight to flight following. Absolutely. I would rather not open it in the air. And, and, and let's be honest, you can type in me in the chat if this applies to you. How many of you know you should be filing flight plans, uh, VFR flight plans, but you're not because it's just too cumbersome. I know I want the search and rescue features, but it's just too cumbersome to, just like Gary said, I'm listening over a VOR. This is, you know, two, you know, two, four, five, ten. Well, if I listen on this VOR, this transmitting close to this. the Bravo. Do I yeah. really have time to open it in there? And I want flight following. And by the way, we're on, we're kind of on the cusp of Jax and Orlando. So it's like you're calling flight following. Now call Orlando, and it's just thing after thing. And by the way, I'm a, let's say I'm a 70-hour pilot trying to figure all this stuff out to get in there. It is tough. Look at all these meets we have. Everybody, right. look, uh, a D or uh, one Degram said he's usually just ends up getting flight following. Well, let me show you something. Let's go back to my iPad full screen. So this just checks everybody's boxes. Let's look at this. Let me see chats here on, on that. Um, uh, yeah, Clifford said, I fly in VFR, then I asked for flight following. So look in the bottom right-hand corner. If your iPad has LTE, your run-up is complete, you're ready to go, you're next to roll down the runway, bottom right corner, I'm going to press activate. Are you sure you want to activate your flight plan flight service? Yes. Activating flight plan. I now have an active flight plan as if I was rolling down the runway at Ocala heading to MCO right now. This is with Lido's flight service station. 
MCO is probably getting the, the cones out in the red carpet, getting ready. I'd like to think so. And but. you know, the other interesting thing is anytime you file a flight plan on your iPad, it's going to yeah. share over to your iPhone too. Exactly. So even if you don't have internet on your iPad, yes. do the same thing on your phone. Yes, it, it's out, it's super. So uh, Clifford, by the way, you're in charge of reminding me to close my flight plan. Don't, don't let me forget to close my flight plan, okay? Uh, but seriously, everything here is all set. I've got everything. If I wanted to see that nav log I was talking about here, remember those cross-country nav logs we used to fill out everybody? I can send this to my printer and print it out. Now, can I show up to this with a check ride? Absolutely. However, and I'm gonna put a big asterisk next to this, see if you agree with me here, you better be able to explain these numbers because they might say to you, well, Jason, well, Gary, how'd you find your top of climb? Four flight did it for me. It's not gonna fly very long on a checker. You'll get away with that once or twice, but you're gonna need to demonstrate that you know how to find a top of climb the old fashioned way as well. So absolutely with that. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead, bottom right corner now. I need to remember to close my flight plan. Um, close my flight plan and yes. So I've landed now at MCO, I've closed my flight plan. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I kind of wanted to show all of that there, super stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me show one more thing, Gary, and then I'll let you get in some IFR flying and departing. Before I even leave, all the important stuff for me starts on the ground. As Gary's gonna show you how he briefs approach plates, I brief taxiway diagrams in a very similar way here. So let's look at this. Let's look and let's say, okay, here is Orlando International. You wonder why private pilots are intimidated, right? I mean, you look at that and that's... That's, uh, that's a lot of taxi. Orders. That's a lot of taxi that I don't want to do. By the way, look up here. We've got two tower frequencies, everything else. But let's break this down because not everything here applies to us as a VFR-only pilot. I like to annotate here. I use blue because once well, M zero company colors, you use pink, right? So, anyways, I've got my ATIS here. I need my arrival ATIS. I'm going to annotate it blue so I know what I'm looking for. I need to highlight my tower frequencies. I don't know which runway I'm getting just yet, but I'm going to highlight both of those so I have them. There's two ground frequencies for east and west, so I'm going to go ahead and annotate those so I have that. Now, let me show you something else very cool here. Where on earth is the FBO and where am I gonna to go to? I wanna go, I was at Atlantic Aviation yesterday, I wanna go there. Look in the top left hand corner, see where it says FBO? Watch this, I press FBO and right there is Atlantic Aviation. And you better believe I'm gonna annotate that and say FBO, that's Atlantic Aviation. So guess what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm begging for 1-8 right or 1-8 left because I want the easiest taxi possible now. I know exactly where my FBO is, and I'm hoping for 1-8 right, 1-8 left, or 3-6 left, 3-6 right, because I know it's going to be a super easy taxi for me into Atlantic with that. One more thing that I'll let Gary take over here. If you look, tap to view 11 nodems here. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. Taxiway G, centerline lights. Okay, that's not totally important to me. Taxiway J5, uh, centerline lights, not important to me. Here, this third one here, I'll put it at the top there for you, it's interesting. Taxiway Juliet, between Taxiway Juliet 2 and Taxiway Juliet 5 is closed. It's lit and barricaded. But I want to go through, I don't even want to get close to this. I know there's lights and there's barricades, but this is night. I'm trying to taxi at a Bravo airport. It's unfamiliar. I'm going to annotate this. First, let's find this. Here is, there's Juliet. There's Juliet 2, do you see that to the left? That's the one that goes over the bridges. Have you ever been driving into MCO? To Juliet 5. So I'm going to annotate this. I'm gonna change the color here. I'm gonna make it red, and I like it kind of opaque there, so that works. And I'm gonna draw, they said from Juliet 2 to Juliet 5, closed. And I'm gonna draw it as red, so I know that that is closed. I've got my frequencies all queued up there and ready to go. I know where I'm going, it's Atlantic Aviation. I would literally go through, notum by notum, any taxiway or runway closures, and I would mark those all out red uh, with a little bit of transparency so I can still read it, and I would have all of that marked out. And literally, Gary, this is all before we left the ground. Uh, it's planning ahead. Well, and see, that's the difference between a professional pilot and an amateur. Yes. I've met a 60-hour private pilot that was a total pro. Yes. I trained a 40,000-hour ATP. I wouldn't let the guy walk my dog. Yes, I understand. Okay. I wouldn't let him drive a golf cart. Yes. It's not about what the little blue plastic card says. What makes a professional pilot is the amount of time you spend before you fly and the amount of time you spend getting better even when you're already done. Absolutely. Which means pretty much everyone on here tonight, you qualify as a professional pilot because professional pilots never stop taking training. You don't stop when the check ride's done. 
you always keep getting better. I heard somebody say a good pilot was always learning. Sounds familiar. That's just a, that's familiar. just what I heard. But let let's say we're we're going out, we're departing, we're leaving MCO. Right? Okay. We just attended Aviation Mastery. We're going to go over and do some IFR flying here. Uh, Gary, why don't you chat? I'll get your iPad sure, set up for you. Why don't you chat great. about what you're going to talk about and share about Aviation Mastery so, too. Aviation Mastery is the premier educational event. It's two days of very intense master level training. Yes. And it's for all pilots. My friend Jason's gonna be there yes. for the VFR stuff. Jamie Beckett from AOPA. Yes. I think we have a special guest speaker coming. We do, I think we can announce that now. Yeah, yeah it's public. So our we actually have uh, on Saturday, Mike Kennedy from Airplane Repo is gonna be our guest speaker. Right. So fantastic, he's a, he's a floral and local and everything else. You're gonna be doing a lot of presentations and these aren't 30 minute, No. you're done. These are a couple hours at a time. They're very intense trainings. There's two days, it's February 8th and 9th. This year, 2019 is coming up soon. And you know, we only have 11 first class seats first left. Class. Yes, that includes uh, and lunch just, just and a, classroom style, and yes. And just a few open seats. We're almost sold out. Absolutely. So, Aviationmastery.org to check that out, learn more, grab your seats, please do that. Complete four flight, Avidyne, Garmin, in-flight emergencies, um, VFR, IFR radio communications, a lot of great a things. A lot more four flight advanced stuff that I'm gonna be teaching. Exactly. And Absolutely. speaking of that, Gary, give them a taste of what they're gonna learn at Aviation Mastery. I've got y'all linked up uh, to the, to the Transmitter Thanks, there. Jason. Yeah. So we're going to look at my airport diagram, and if we can cut over to my four flight, you notice I actually have Jeppesen charts. Oh, sorry. Oh, here I got it. Let's try that. We'll kick over just a second. Technical difficulties. There we go. So you notice I actually use Jeppesen. Um, almost all professional pilots prefer Jeppesen. Yes. And what's interesting is you can pay extra to get Jeppesen charts on four flight, and it's worth every penny. Yes. I actually get them on four flight for free. Super cool. Because I have JEP charts on my Avidyne. Oh, super cool. And if you buy Jeppesen charts for your Avidyne 550 or 540, you actually get them for free. I didn't know that. On ForeFlight. But I recommend you get them either way. And I actually have one of the highest tiers out there, the Pro Plus subscription. Yes. Which has some really cool advanced IFR features. So, yeah, look, I've marked the same things up. You've got the NOTAMs. We've got some that closed runway. I marked the exact same one. Yes. But let's zoom in down there. And you see by Atlantic, there's little telephone systems. Yeah. Those little telephone and highlighted in green. Hey, what is that? I don't know, but there's gotta be a legend on the chart somewhere. <laughs> oh, okay, well maybe actually I do know. That's actually where you stop and call ground. Super cool. So the question is, is you know, when you first start your engine, you need to get the ATIS. Yes. Then you need to call clearance delivery. VFR or IFR, yeah. Well, I don't. I get fly. Well, you're going IFR everywhere. No, no, but I don't listen to the ATIS. This is right. And I don't call clearance. This is right. Because Tell me it. with Four Flight Pro Plus, if I click over here to airports, and I select MCO, and we look at the METAR, you can see the METAR. Sure. But there's an extra button that we have called Digital ATIS. Okay. And the Digital ATIS is actually this. It's Arrival Information Lima, recorded at 0053 Zulu. Winds, visibility, the altimeter, they even spell it out, tree 002. Wow. Simultaneous approaches. It is the exact text of the recorded ATIS. Wow. And it updates instantaneously. Wow. So I don't have to listen to the ATIS, which means I can write all this stuff down yes. before I start. Yes. Now, airline pilots don't even actually get a clearance delivery anymore. They actually do something called CPDLC, yes. which is Controller Pilot Digital communications. So they get their clearance by text message. Well, now I get my clearance by text message and email too. Super and it's cool. available at over 70 airports. It's called a pre-departure clearance. Let me show you how it works. Super cool, Gary. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just want to lock. Whoop, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I want to do that. Just want to lock my rotation. Sorry, all great technical. I, I'm a true four flight expert. I just can't work an <laughs> iPad apparently. So here's the way I'm gonna flight plan. I'm gonna start out with KMCO, just like you did. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna put a space, and then I'm gonna go K, Oscar, Charlie, Foxtrot, mm -hmm. space, 4,000. Same cool technique. I thought that was the coolest thing. And then I'm gonna drag down the Charlie 
and add one H, meaning I want to leave in one hour. Wow. You can actually add 30 minutes, one hour, you can do AM, PM, Zulu time. I'm going to hit go, and then when I open up my flight plan, you'll see that my aircraft, 49 or 41 Foxtrot or 206, is already programmed in at 4,000, leaving in an hour. Super cool. So what I'm going to do is now, you always want to file standard instrument departures. They're going to give them to you anyway most of the time, so you might as well file them. So I'm going to hit routes, and here are some routes that ForeFlight shows as recommended and cleared. I love ForeFlight. They may not be the best routes for you. They're only showing you a historical of what other people have gotten. The route advisor may actually give you a route that's illegal for you to fly. It may be turbojets or turboprop only. So I don't really check the route advisor except what have other people gotten. What I actually do is I simply go procedure, mm -hmm. departure from MCO, Cool. And I think I'm going to do the JAG-6. And then I'm going to add it to the route. And then I'm going to touch where it says JAG-6 and put show plate. The other advantage of Jeppesen plates is they're actually now drawn to scale. I see that. Which you can now overlay on the map. But the first thing I got to do is I got to zoom in and look for killer notes. DME and radar required. Mm. Well, I got DME because I have Avidine. Yes. GPS with the current database can replace that. Yes. Radar means their radar has to be working. You got something else but, on there though. Uh-oh, turbo jets only. Which we would love to have. Yes. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, maybe we could start a GoFundMe account. Yeah, for exactly. Gary and Jason's like vision jet. Yeah, exactly. If love we it. can all just donate 50 cents, we'll yeah. be there in 20 years. All right, so that doesn't actually work. So I'm gonna try procedure again, do departure. And I think what I'm gonna do is the Orlando 4, add to route. Now what's interesting, and I'll just hide that plate, the Orlando 4 doesn't seem... To do anything. Right. So <laughs> if I touch Orlando 4, 4 and touch show plate, this is what's called a manual termination or vector only sure, the whole state. departure. Yeah. Wow. And basically what it is, is you're going to get radar vectors to one of these VORs. Yeah. Now, when you try and load it into an Avidine or a garment, it may not even be in the stored procedure. Wow. Because it's not really a procedure, except you got to read for killer notes. Radar required, they got it. And if you depart runway 35 left or right or 36 left or right, you must have DME. Interesting. Now, what's interesting is right there. It'll say climb on heading. So I know my clearance is going to be runway heading mm -hmm. and cross two miles south of Orlando, VOR at or above 2300, and cross the 115 radial at or above 2600. So if they say climb via the SID, yes. I actually have to make all those. Wow. So I can put it in my clearance, and every clearance is cleared to, route, altitude, Yes. climb this, expect this within this many minutes, mm -hmm. and it says maintain 5000, and expect for the clearance in 10. Just like our clearance. So I can pre-write my clearance. Yes. So let's go back to my flight plan. Yes, this is so fascinating. We, we teach so much to think ahead of the airplane. We're not even at the airport yet, Gary, and we have this much stuff already planned oh, out. So much better than the old ways. Yes. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rubber band to the VOR. I'm gonna touch nav OCF. Boom. And that's the way I'm going to file the flight plan. Now, before I do that, i got to figure what procedure am I going to shoot here? Well, if I touch OCF and I look at the weather, and I've already done all that, winds are pretty much calm. Mm -hmm. We're going to be landing to the north. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and file and brief this and do everything you guys did, except what I want to do is I'm going to touch OCF, and i got to pick the plate. Really, the best way to do it, if you all look down at the bottom, I'm going to touch plates. I'm going to close out my airport diagram. I'm going to touch that top arrow, and I'm going to create the plus symbol, and I'm going to create a new binder for each airport I go to. I don't dump them all in one. Smart. So I'm going to name it Ocala. I'm going to touch the plate, and I'm going to add the plates I need, which is airport, ILS, RNAV, RNAV, and the VOR. You actually need to add all the plates you can legally shoot. Yes. And I'm going to open up the RNAV 3.6, and I'm actually going to show you all my method for marking up an instrument plate. 
And once you start doing mark, 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 the more notes you take, the $99 Apple Pencil actually makes it worth <laughs> yes. it. Yes. So I'm going to open up. And look, it happens to be pink, which is a much uh, better color. Than coincidence, color, right? I'm sure. And I'm just going to make it big. I'm going to highlight Ocala and the name of the airport. Yes. Actually, that's really important. There's a Sacramento VOR2 approach mm -hmm. and a Sacramento 4 VOR approach. And they go to two different airports. And wow. people mix it up all the time. I bet. That's a way to bust a check, right? So this is the GPS Tree 6. And I'm just going to highlight everything that's important to me. And ATIS is on 128125. I have to have the ATIS before I can accept an approach clearance. Yes. That's why it's in that order. And that little star next to Alcala right there says it's a non-contiguous, or in English, part-time tower. Yes. I don't highlight the ground because I very rarely need to talk to ground while I'm shooting an approach. <laughs> yes. My final course is 004. The minimum altitude at FIBUS is 1,700. And I have a DA that's conditional of 280 feet. Then I just look at the notes, and the only thing in there that matters to me at all is that y'all got pilot controlled lighting on 119 or 25. Sure do. And then I'm just going to mark up my initial approach fixes of Tucho, of Ambeck, and of Tulsa, which could also be an the intermediate mission. fix. Yes. I'm going to go 004, and then I'm going to put a giant T over Phibus. Mm -hmm. I was just always taught time, turn, twist, throttle, talk at the we final. All? Weren't we all? Yeah. I'll put a T over here. In my 206, I'm going to be doing the approach at 100 knots, which means my glide path will be 531 feet, and my DA is 280. Then, the most important thing of the approach is not the approach. A real professional pilot never plans on landing. We always plan on going miss. Yes. And every mist on the planet, I always do it in green, because green means go to me. Yes. Climb to 2100, cuff Joe and hold. Yes. And then, there's a TAA around it. So, what I'm going to do... Circle that. Runway tree six is the missed approach point. Cuff Joe is the hold with 084. And then let's start putting in some text. So what I do at missed, I want to climb to 2100. So I've got text. I'm going to put it right there. Oops, try that again. I'm going to do my text and put it right there. And I'm actually going to use the world symbol and put in a special character, which means to me, climb. Then I'm going to pull down 21. And I'm going to make that a nice solid green. Then I'm going to put another one over here that says when I get there, I'm going to do a teardrop entry with a right turn 25 degrees towards 004. So that'd be about 0, 3, 0. Because the last time you want to figure out how to enter a hold is when you're already there. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And then I'm just going to add all my other numbers. But let's go to a nice red. Anywhere outside of Tulsa, looks like I should be at 2,000 feet. Inside of Tulsa, if I want to, I can descend to 1,700. You don't have to, by the way. You don't have to do that stair step down. Sure. It's at or above 1,700 feet. You're right. And then it looks like my decision altitude's 280. So I'm going to put in my decision altitude here of a glide path or precision approach to me, mm -hmm. four. I don't blame you. A little higher. I always round up and add 100 when I'm just flying for fun with my family in the plane. Yeah. There's no reason to go to the published minimums. No. Because by the time you react, you'll usually go slower than that. Yes. Now, the advantage of doing all that is now when I say done and overlay that on the map, and you're flying it, and you're nice and zoomed in, all the numbers are already there. With you don't situational have to look awareness at the showing absolutely everything there. Your annotations are there. And for visual learners, I am, I know you are, we're drawing our eyes right to what we need to see. We are so used to it at this point, it makes our lives just that much easier. Right, now I'm actually gonna add the initial approach fix to absolutely. my flight plan, but I can't just drag and drop here. I've actually gotta insert it after OCF. That's correct. So I'm gonna say insert before KOCF, mm -hmm. and put in, and that was, sorry, Calza. So I'm going to insert before, Talza. Cool. And now look. Now, I've already filed, okay? And I've, this is the flight plan I'm actually gonna file. 
And then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna get a text message. Mm -hmm. Here's your pre-departure clearance. But I filed a very similar flight plan to this earlier and didn't get a pre-departure clearance. Mm -hmm. Because you won't get a pre-departure clearance if the route you're getting is as filed or very close to it. Wow. So if you're good and you file something that you're actually gonna get, they actually will not give you a pre-departure clearance. And I actually got some pictures, I'll show you here in ForeFlight. I did get an updated text with the new ATIS. Cool. And I even got a note from ForeFlight, a pre-departure clearance has not been received. So when I do call clearance, they very specifically say, make sure you say negative PDC. Wow. Now, I did do another one, and this is actually a pre-departure clearance from Oklahoma City that I did get. And it says, not only does it give you the current ATIS, but it gives you everything. Your filed route is this, and the amended route yes. is the muddy 3 dot muddy font, we sat to lewd, 5,000 with a squawk code, wow. everything's already, so I really don't have to call clearance at all with the pre-departure clearances. You've read the ATIS, you've read your clearance, you've read your clearance on the Uber ride out to the airport, like everything's set already. You just fire up and you're calling ground. I'm done. Yeah. And, it, and so much workload's been reduced. Yes. All right, let's go back to maps. So we've already filed. Now before I take off, I'm actually gonna now touch procedure, approach into OCF, RNAV 36, starting at Telza, and add to route. Now you notice ForeFlight always puts in the procedure turn. Yes. Because ForeFlight doesn't know if it's an intermediate fix or an initial approach fix. So as soon as I take off, mm -hmm. I'm not going to Ocala. The second I get to my final controller, I'm gonna say, I would like 49 or 41 Foxtrot, level 4000. Yes. Full stop landing at Ocala with ATIS Yankee except I'm gonna add a little bit to more. I'm gonna say 49 or 401 Foxtrot, level 4000, full stop Ocala, RNAV 36, starting at Talza. Yes. I'd like to go direct there now, and I have Avis Yankee. You always gotta say the Avis last. Of course. And you know what they say every time? Hmm. Direct Talza. Yes, so wow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to touch that green bar, but activate approach. And it can't find my current position. So it That's know, why yes. I can do it. But I'm gonna go there, and now this is what everybody forgets. I'm going missed. I know I'm going missed. So I'm going to add after OCF. Kufjo. Kufjo, my Mr. Pro told. Yes. And then I'm going to put a space bar and put KBKV. Yeah. I actually never do a repeated approach if I go missed once. It didn't work once. What makes you think it's going to work right. again, right? I actually had a really great friend in California that got divorced and married the same woman five times. Got it. Because on the fifth time, it's going to work out. <laughs> like she hated you the first four times, yeah. buddy. And it's not really working out. Right? Yes. But that's a sign of insanity, which is repeating the same thing, right? Yes. So I'm going down to BKV. Yes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch BKV. I'm going to put show plate. And in case the winds are strong, I'm going to add now the RNAV 27 when I'm ready to go. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it, my little blue line, down. Hold on just a second. Didn't quite work. And drag my little blue line down to Ozine. Waypoints, Ozine. Now, all you have to do is touch the Talza RNAV, show that plate again. So I'm flying along. I go missed, I end up at Cuffcho and they're always gonna say, say request. Yes. Well, what, I'd like intentions. To, what are your intentions? I'm gonna hold for a couple minutes and I'll get back to you. When you've got the current weather at BKV, you can now tell them, I would like to go to my alternate of BKV, but they don't have a flight plan there. So instead of making them create a flight plan, you say, I'd like to head direct Ozine mm -hmm for an RNAV 27 full stop. And you are again thinking ahead. And by the way, we're still in the Uber on the way out or sitting in the hotel on the way to the airport. Yeah, all of this is planned out. So don't stop. You can add the Mr. Approach Point. You can add another airport. Yes. And these are really just a couple of the pro tips. The more work you do on the ground, 
the easier flying is. Well, I think that's exactly what Gary said here. You know, the difference between an amateur pilot and let's call it a master pilot, since we're in the business of pursuing and teaching aviation mastery, is that preparation, is that work that is spent on the ground. So uh, we're going to open it up for questions now Absolutely. on YouTube and Facebook. But again, um, if you desire to learn more about uh, ForeFlight, Avidyne, Garmin, in-flight emergencies, radio communications, if you truly are in the business pursuing mastery, not just currency, gone to the days of being a current pilot. No one wants to be just a current pilot. I did my three takeoff and landings. I got a 70% on my written test. Like that's, there's nothing to brag about there, right? right. We're not even pursuing, we're, we're beyond proficiency now. We're in this business of pursuing mastery. So if you want to join Gary and I on that journey to aviation mastery, I encourage you to visit aviationmastery.org. There are 11 seats when we open this up left for first class. I don't know how many are left now, but I guarantee we're going to sell out before those dates of February 9th and 10th in Orlando, Florida. And now you know how to fly right into MCO right? and out of it. So I, I still would probably go to Orlando exec, but yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yes, you absolutely can. Uh, all right, let's go ahead. Let's uh, go ahead and take some questions. Our buddy Eric, fantastic to see you on here as well. Josh is still wondering about this uh, D Atis. We're going to explain it just a little bit more. Josh on Facebook. Oh, hey, Josh. Uh, or Joshua. I'm sorry if I abbreviated that. I should have. D Atis is actually digital Atis. It's actually a word for word text version of what you hear a controller say on the air. So it really is uh, just another shortcut. It just one less thing you have to listen to. And the nice thing is, is because MCO has digital latest, yes. you can actually get that in route if you're connected to the internet on your phone or something. Wow. And then when you're into a busy Bravo airspace, all you have to hear is that letter and confirm you've already gotten it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Super. Some student pilots. Uh, check, can't make aviation mastery because his check ride is on the 8th. Well, fan, that's I would just reschedule the check. Right no, no, fun. no. That's a fantastic excuse. That's awesome, my friend. That is super, super great. Um, let's see. Chris is asking, are we going to talk about anything Garmin Pilot related, Aviation Mastery? What do you think with that? You're, you're leading kind of the technology forums well, over there. I will certainly mention it. Although, honestly, one of the things that kind of makes me a master is I kind of limit myself. I'm really great at like four things. Yeah. And I've just never spent any time using Garmin Pilot. I've heard really great things about yes. it, and I know some people love it. I'm not the expert in it. But I'm going to talk about some general things that will absolutely apply to it as well. Just nothing very specific. Sure, absolutely. Ron was asked about logging hours on ForeFlight. It literally does it for you now. I mean, there's some things we have to fix and everything else, but for the most part, my logbook now is ForeFlight. I still keep paper and update it occasionally. Pa pa what'd you call it? Exactly, paper occasionally. Pa papyrus? But, yeah, exactly. Oh, You're okay. using just ForeFlight now, I take it? Oh, I've been digital for years. Yes, that's I even time. log my VOR checks. So uh, somebody asked a question, FAA approach plates are not to scale. No, that's not correct, April. FAA approach plates are drawn to scale, which means they're geo-referenceable, meaning you can overlay them on the map and you get the little blue moving airplane. Yes. But standard instrument departures and star standard terminal arrival routes are not drawn to scale, and only Jeppesen does that. Fascinating. And again, by the way, these aren't just four flight questions. Gary and I are here to answer any flight training, aviation-related questions you have. Kevin asks us, listen, I'm afraid to talk to ATC. Any tips? Kevin, it's one thing to say get out there and just do it, but it truly needs to happen. Two tips, and I'll let Gary share some tips. First off, if you haven't been on liveatc.net yet, you need to. Go listen to MCO. Go listen to JFK. Pretend you're JetBlue 523 and read your radio calls back. Re, you know, pretend you're that airplane and read the calls back as if you were that airplane. Then when they're off to the next frequency, change airplanes and work through it that way. Secondly, start writing yourself some scripts. World famous Jamie Beckett, who will be speaking at Aviation Mastery. Jamie Beckett always says, you know, VFR flight following, talking to ATC, it's like ordering pizza. Who are you? Where are you? And what do you want? Just like ordering pizza. Absolutely. And you know, the biggest tip I can give you is wait to talk and talk slow. You know, you and I talk very fast when yes. we're on stage. Y'all get me in a radio. And I'm like, this is Premier very, Jet, nine or six, This is very nine, true. Romeo Echo. The slower you talk, the slower they'll talk to you. And if you don't understand anything, never be afraid to ask. 
just tell them, can you say that a little bit slower? Absolutely. Lee on Facebook says, pop up IFR. Are you going ATC or are you going flight service station? I've done both. It, it, for me, it depends on ATC's workload. Mm -hmm. uh, one time I was truly in a jam, you know, not stuck on top, but wasn't expecting to get stuck on top mm -hmm. and called up ATC. Thank goodness they weren't very busy. But chances are, if it's IFR weather, they're probably busy. Well, yeah, and you know, as a general rule, I don't like pop-up AC, AT, uh, IFR clearances, and I'll tell you why. One time I had the clouds coming down on me. Yes. And it was not forecast. I had a weather briefing. They weren't expected. Sure. I couldn't go through a mountain pass. So I said, uh, SoCal, you know, Cessna, whatever I was in, I'd like an IFR clearance, and I'm sorry. I always say I'm sorry because then they have to fill in a flight plan while they're talking to 40 other planes. He said, no problem, Gary. Climb and maintain 4,000. I'll get you your IFR clearance. I can't climb to 4,000 without Because I'm VFR, clearance. right. So I actually wow. landed, filled out a four-flight IFR flight plan, took back off, got the same guy. But if you do have the time, it is actually nicer to file it through flight service from the nearest VOR. Absolutely. Is that the one time you went IFR last year? No. Or, I, or VFR, I'm sorry. I was actually in Hawaii and there was no radar. <laughs> oh, I understand. Anyway, so Finger 1200 dot and roll it. I understand. Gary, a few on YouTube, a few on Facebook were asking, you know, which, which iPad? They were saying they don't have GPS with their iPad. They don't have LTE. Is there something that they can hook up with? I fly with the Stratus. Uh, the Apario Stratus I'm is... I'm a huge fan of Apario Stratus. Yes. You know what's, it, what's really great about the new Garmin technology is you can pay extra for something called a flight stream mm -hmm. and link your GPS position and everything to your iPad. Yes. Avidine, of course, has Wi-Fi built in for free and yes. it'll connect to the, wi -Fi, uh, the iPad and I never connect it to my panel. Wow. I don't care if I'm flying a GTN, a G3000 perspective. Or you shared this in our training. You I, always want to back I up. I always only connect it to the Stratus from Apario in the back. Because if I have a panel failure, yes. then I have a complete backup yes. and my own weather and traffic source independent yes. of the stuff I get on the panel. Yes, I, I want to say that again. You have seen 2-3 Mike Zulu, right? There is people drool over that panel. It is outstanding. However, and Gary taught us this, we still fly with a Stratus. And we do not link our iPad to, or, or our, our kneeboard iPad. We have one mounted in the panel that is linked to the Avidine. But Yes, we can grab GPS from that. We don't. We link directly to the Stratus. It is then backups on backups on backups. I, I think Matt and I were counting the other day. We can get six attitude indicators at any one point in that airplane if we need it. Like we talk about a lot of backups in that airplane. Let's take some more right. questions here. All about redundancy. Will said, does the government shut down impact pilot certificates? It it does to some extent. I mean, well, a little it, bit, and yeah. you know much more about the processing. But the way I understand it is, you can absolutely take a written test, but you get a printed result. Yes, exactly. You have to do a paper iacra form. This is all correct. To paper. Yes, and you'll get a temporary certificate. You can do everything today. The only thing is, is those temporary certificates are only good for 120 days. Yes. So if it comes up on the end, you just have to log into FAA.gov and request another temporary certificate. Yep. yep. You're Nobody spot. should be postponing check rides. If you're ready to go, you're ready. You're ready. Because a, a DPE is an independent contractor of the FAA. That's right. So it shouldn't be much of an issue. More questions, more comments. We are here. Again, yes, we absolutely love the Stratus. A bunch agreeing not to link it to the panel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Marilyn's talking about four flight checklists. I, I've been using some Avidine checklists on there. Are you doing anything with four flight checklists? Oh, all my checklists are in four flight. Super. And what's interesting is four flight in like version one and two had checklists. Yes. Then it dropped out. Then it went to its own independent back. And they kind of just stealth mode snuck them back in cool. just a couple months ago. All of my checklist, including, if you can all watch my iPad for just a second. Might have a link back. I'm sure it took you off the Apple TV. Okay, you might have a link back up. Looks like I'm linked. Am I still on there? There, there we go. go. Now, you are legally required to have the aircraft POH and the POH for all your avionics in arm's reach at all times. So if I simply go over to my documents, close it out, and click on Avidyne, the owner's manual's right there. Super cool. And a digital copy and that's, is I'm, always legal. Yes, wow. As opposed to you've seen the back of the, you know, some of the airplanes, they got the back pilot seats, cut all the Stop, manuals, right. STCs, everything just right. crammed there. Someone was talking about, um, is four flight talking the G1000 yet? Uh, I believe the answer is, I think that's a proprietary thing. They want, Garmin Pilot sure does. 
Well, you can buy a flight stream for certain software versions of okay. the G1000. I don't know the exact software versions of making models that you can add it to. Yeah, I know our Forefly, uh, Forefly does talk to the new Dynon HDX. We're the first certified Dynon HDX in 172, and there's nothing cooler than doing what Gary just did, showing us, creating all that stuff, getting in the plane and going, send to the Dynon, right. and now it's on the airplane. It is just, it's phenomenal. But at the same time, we can't get spoiled by this technology. We still need to have these mastery skill sets to fall back on with that. So here's a great question on YouTube from ComCF, or maybe ComCFI. Yes. Um, does ATC know that you received the digital latest? Well, yes, because it's actually your responsibility mm -hmm. when you check in to say, I, I'm at Atlantic. Mm -hmm. I'd like to taxi to Tree 5 Left, IFR with ATIS Lima. You still have to tell them that you got Lima or Yankee or whatever yes. it is. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Super, well, and it tells you, it's Adis Lima there. Kevin said, I was about to sell my Stratus, but I'm gonna keep it, thanks to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's Excellent. awesome, that's awesome here. All right, uh, Eric says, laminate checklist when flying IFR. And, and you know what, we're not here to tell, yeah, we're not here to tell you this is right, this is wrong, we're here to give you new solutions to what might work for you. If this ever becomes a distraction and you're spending more time with your head down than looking outside, VFR pilots, I'm talking to you, you know, you're, you're a little too reliant on this. Well, you know, and today I was lucky enough to be in studio and I actually recorded a special video for your PIC members. Yes. All about the top 10 iPad mistakes. Yes. And the biggest mistake is looking at the iPad. Head and there's a great time. example of somebody who taxied into other airplanes. Wow. Because they were looking down. Just too much head downtime. Gary is actually creating content for our online ground school, our Pilot Center Circle members. You're seeing a lot more of Gary. He's truly just a master in all things. Let's take like two more questions that we're going to wrap this thing up. So I'll get back to enjoying your evenings as well. And then Gary has a ton of filming to do here in the studio tomorrow. I'm off to Chicago for a seminar Saturday at 9 a.m. Hopefully I'll see some of you, you out there as well. You're coming back February 9th, right? I'm coming back February 9th for oh. Aviation Master, don't worry. <laughs> I don't want to be up there all like, days It's long. like minus one in Chicago, so I'm like in and out, you know? Come back to Florida here. Let's grab some more questions here. Thank you for all the kind words on the uh, on the comments. Uh, Grant wants to know about the MOS function. Any any thoughts on MOS? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's close. So it's MOS is a wonderful thing. It's not a legal FAA weather product and it's not as accurate as a terminal aerodrome forecast or a TAF. But what it is, is there's so many airports that don't have a TAF. Yes. What they do is they actually take a computer model and they average several TAFs and weather reports together and you're in the middle and they create a MOS. And the cool thing about a MOS, even though it's not a legal weather product, they actually break it down into smaller periods. Cool. So a TAF may say it's gonna be this weather for the next 12 hours, yes. but a MOS may say at 2 p.m. it's gonna be this, and yes. 4 p.m. it's gonna be this. Yes. So it's a really cool tool, even though it's not FAA approved. Absolutely. Uh, I'll take a question over here on uh, YouTube. They are asking about how is this going to fly on a check ride? And listen, the answer is yes, this is, will work and this will satisfy on a check ride. But as I alluded to earlier, eventually that examiner is going to get in going, well, Jason, how'd you come to this number? Four flight calculate it? Okay. How about this top of climb? Four flight. Eventually, if you say, if you show that four flight is that much of a crutch for you, this iPad is the only way you fly. They might say, hey, your battery died, whatever it is. Show me you know how to fly this airplane here. Yes, you can use your iPad on a check ride as long as it doesn't prove as a distraction or prove to be a crush. Have you had a similar experience with your students? Absolutely. You know, every examiner, and I haven't trained students for primary check rides in many years. Yes. But every examiner I ever know would let you take off and five minutes in the check ride, reach over and turn that iPad off and go yes. power failure. Yes. And of course, all my students just pulled out their phone and went, nah, and just did it on their phone, <laughs> which by the way is legal. But especially on check rides, but not even check rides. Look, I've got two iPads, an Avidyne, an Aspen, an iPhone, and I still carry paper instrument approach plates yes. for every airport I go to IFR. Absolutely. Because paper can never break. Absolutely. So I still want everybody to always carry a paper backup, especially for check rides. Yes. You've got to be ready to show you can do it old school. Yes, absolutely. Listen, I hope you all enjoyed this and just got so much value out of this. It's truly uh, Gary and I's job to better serve you 
to make aviation just safer and smarter. That is our goal each and every day. If we delivered any value to you, if you would just give it a, a thumbs up, a like, we truly appreciate that. And we hope to see you at Aviation Mastery in Orlando, Florida, February 9th and 10th. I hope you can join us. Literally, there are 11 first class seats last I checked, 44 there generally. Were. There, there were. Uh, aviationmastery.org is the URL. Imagine a two hour long four flight in depth seminar where you can interact, have your iPads out as well, talking more about Avidyne, Garmin, in-flight emergencies, radio communications, uh, Jamie Beckett's doing a go-no-go no -go decision in a rusty pilot center. There's so many amazing things in there. So I want to say on behalf of Gary and myself, the pilotsafety.org team, the m0a.com team, thank you so much for being such a blessing to all of us. You truly are the reason we get up so early, stay up so late, do all these crazy things we do. Well, we do it for you all to help make you safer, smarter pilots. If there's anything, anything at all, myself, Gary, or our teams can do this week to make you a safer, smarter pilot, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I hope to see you February 9th and 10th at Aviation Mastery in Orlando, Florida. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, guys. We'll, we'll see you. We'll see you all soon.